From 1939 to 1941, the German plan to invade Switzerland, Operation Tannenbaum. Hitler had no intention of respecting the neutrality of the Swiss, it seems, but the Swiss had no intention of giving up without a fight. The Battle of France is over, Churchill told Britain's House of Commons on the 18th of June 1940. I expect the Battle of Britain is about to begin. Wasn't he forgetting something? The Battle of Switzerland. Some took the possibility very seriously indeed. Within a week of Winston Churchill's speech, Hitler had given the order for a plan to be drawn up for the invasion of Switzerland. The Oberkommando des Heer, Army High Command, was hard at work. The German dictator felt deep anger towards the Swiss. He had seen them as kindred spirits and expected them to respond to his rise with an Anschluss, just as Austria had done in 1938. But many Swiss were of French and Italian background, and even those who did speak German identified strongly with an independent Switzerland. Neutral or not? Was Switzerland more valuable to Nazi Germany as a neutral state? Swiss bankers, it's been claimed, were the launderers of Nazi gold. Some historians have suggested that Swiss neutrality was bogus, that the country was effectively an ally of Germany. If not by its own choice, then by the fact that, from the time of the fall of France, it was boxed in by hostile states. Others, however, have held Switzerland up as a heroic example of patriotic self-sufficiency, even of the need for Americans to have the right to carry guns. An often emotional, inevitably partisan debate still rages over whether Hitler left Switzerland alone because it suited him to do so, or rather, because he feared to strike. Not so peaceful. The historic presence of the Red Cross and a host of other humanitarian organisations in more recent times may easily mislead. Swiss neutrality was never about pacifism. No nation has been more preoccupied with the need to defend itself than the violent rabble who sent the Burgundians of Charles the Bold packing in 1476. Subsequently, the Swiss had spent several centuries as the European mercenaries of choice. In 1939, as now, neutrality was a proud tradition to be fiercely defended. All had to do their duty when called upon. Within three days of the outbreak of war, 400,000 Swiss had indeed been mobilised. General Henry Goussam, their commander, didn't expect the Germans to be promptly put to flight or for his homeland to be left inviolate. What he did hope was that he could make the prospect of invasion an uninviting one. Failing that, he wanted his countrymen to make its conquest as difficult and dirty a job as they possibly could. Rather than envisaging a heroic stand at his country's frontier, then Gusan made plans for fighters to fall back in good order, slip away and hole up in a reggie, a remote and formidable fortified retreat high up in the Alps. This would subsequently be their base for a long and determined guerrilla war that would cost the occupier dear in resources and in lives. The Swiss themselves would pay dearly too, the majority of their country, including cities and major towns, would have to be abandoned to the mercies of the Germans. Alpine Assault The initial assumption was that 21 divisions would sweep in from newly conquered central France. The initial assumption was that 21 divisions would sweep in from newly conquered central France, where 2 million troops were essentially idle. After an infantry feint over the Jura Mountains, had lured the Swiss army out, the Germans would cut in behind them from the west, while an Italian army invaded from the south. The plan was scaled down in subsequent revisions. Not till October 1940 was it finalised under the name Tannenbaum, Fear Tree, and it then gathered dust on a shelf. To this day, we don't know why. <laughs>